It has been confirmed again and again that when the people united decide to move, nobody, no matter how powerful, can stop them. As you can see now, this is the national theater. The Nigerian masses, under the leadership of Enough is Enough, United Action for Democracy, Youth Against Austerity, and all other groups are here to massively protest. And we started right away from Oju and Legba, down to the national stadium and back to the national theater. We have been able to move a mass to tell the Nigerian people that we do not believe in the kind of government that we run in Nigeria. We do not believe in the kind of system that oppresses the Nigerian masses. The kind of system that we have 38 dollars per barrel of crude oil and the Nigerian ruling class that they can no give subsidy to petrol again. Petrol has to go up to 145 naira per litre. For an average Nigeria, where we produce crude oil and we produce a lot of other things. Before, and now, petrol, uh, crude oil internationally has gone to 50 dollars per barrel. Why is it that the federal government has not deemed it fit to even constitute the PPRU, the regulatory agency of petrol? What it means is that they have deregulated. They have left the Nigerian oil economy and energy sector into the hands of some wicked people called the market forces. These market forces are people who are businessmen, the ruling class people and the bosses who determine the face of the masses. One thing we have to know is that their major goal, their major aim, their major reason of deregulating is for profit for the businessmen, more riches for the rich, and the poorer, the poorer, the poorer, the poor gets. Now, I want you to know that we have come here today to demand that the regulation be reversed immediately. We must renationalize the oil economy and the energy sector. We have seen it in the PSCN that since when Nepal has been privatized, it has gone from bad to worse and from worse to worse. In fact, if there is any worse after worse or worse, it has been there. I want you to also know that we are in a country where the Naira has been forcefully devalued when, when there is an economic recession. What it means is that the political economists in Nigeria who call themselves market forces are hell-bent to kill the Nigerian economy. Now, the Nigerian Naira is not even as powerful as the Ghana cities. The Nigerian Naira is as useless as whatever it is when it is faced with euro and dollar. We also have a situation where in Nigeria the local government has been bastardized, has been bacchanized, has been dictatorially taken over by the governors and the presidency is not doing anything against. We have a situation where workers are not paid their dues. So many workers are owed 10 months, 8 months, 9 months, 7 months and co. And you see that in Nigeria today, these same governors are not ready to pay. Nonetheless, of talking of increasing minimum wage at this period of recession, the Nigerian masses, market women, traders, artists cannot go to the market anymore and buy whatever they need. They cannot even go to the market to get a solo nylon. We see a situation whereby a lot of people are sleeping under the bridges, a lot of people are sleeping in the fields everywhere. Housing is a problem in Nigeria. Kerosene, in fact, is now even times four of what the price of petrol is. And some people are even suggesting that we should be using petrol to cook. This is what the structural adjustment program has done to Nigeria. It is three decades now that they have started neoliberalism in Nigeria. And our country is getting poorer and poorer. What President Obasanjo achieved is to create 20 billionaires. And he has been able to create times 20 million of poor people. Which means that under Obasanjo, we were able to have over 200 million Nigerians who became poorer and poorer. Under the President Yadadu Atu, few billionaires were produced. Nigerians were still poor and poor and poor. We also have it under Jonathan, where the GDP was celebrated massively. But do you know that just a few days and months after, the people are back to poverty. The people, there is primitive accumulation everywhere. We can see it in the anti-corruption today, crusade today, that it is exposed that what the Nigerian ruling class, what the Nigerian governors and presidents do, is just to loot Nigeria dry and to kill the country, definitely. We want to demand, one, that the regulation should be immediately reversed and the oil and energy sector be renationalized. Industrialization, as at 1986 in Nigeria, we have over 600 industries. But now, we do not have up to 570. All over 570 has been privatized, and these industries have been killed. And the money is now in the hand of few people. We want to have a situation in Nigeria where over 160 million people will be living in at least a good minimum wage, a living wage. We want to see a situation where Nigerians can be able to even feed themselves. We want to see a situation whereby there will not be just 5% allocation to education. That, that will be up to 26% as recommended by UNESCO. We want to see a situation whereby 
Nigerian president will be sick and we have to treat him here in Nigeria. We want to see a situation whereby Nigerians will be able to school in universities in Nigeria. We don't want a situation whereby the Nigerian leaders will not fund education and we want the Nigerian poor masses to fund education. Nigerians want food. Nigerians want clothing. Nigerians want housing. Nigerians want good living, living wage. Nigerians want to live better. And we are saying in the United Action for Democracy, youth against austerity, that encompasses the movement against austerity and action with enough is enough. That it enough is enough is enough. The mumu in Nigeria has, is enough and we cannot continue to do this. My name is Kule Wiseman Ajayi, the General Secretary of the United Action for Democracy and the Convener Movement Against Austerity and Hash. Thank you.